Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And uh, it's Saturday night. And uh, Big Porky's stopping in. I'm uh, having a night in, uh, obviously. I've been training this morning, well, I went for a walk this morning and I've done a bit of punch bag and a few light weights, been eating correctly and I'm on this, water, shit is this, but you know I can't, uh, can't pull out now Spencer for so if you're watching, don't you be pulling out Spencer, but we'll talk about this fight another day, uh, once I've got another couple of weeks under my camp. But I'm doing some training at Mick Wales. Three nights a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, I'm going to be doing some with Richard Tower, some bits and bobs. Might do a bit with Fuki and Glyn, but they're busy. Glyn Rhodes, because I respect them and they're my pals, but I've got a lot on. So I'm, just, I'm not going to bother a lot of people with my issues. But as regards... Uh, training at the moment, I'm enjoying it. It's uh, I can't explain it. It's not, it's not something I'm used to waking up aching, uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? Right, I had a chance to copy these out. These are ones just I've only just noticed these, so I'm just going to go through these few questions. This is from Paul Statton. I don't know how to enlarge writing on this, so usually you uh, copy them out. From Middlesbrough, how are you doing Paul, hope you're well. When Eddie has taken every last penny out of boxing and moved on, will they still go to boxing shows when boxing needs the publicity the most? Uh, well, you know years ago, right, and this is a true story, when Chris Eubank senior lost his rematch with Steve Collins Barry Earn cut back right he cut back they were out he were out at game then for years until Eddie came back he cut back yeah he, he did he put odd show on here and there but only because they had dates off Sky but the shows that he put on were pony weren't they they weren't really doing anything what with them they were baba like that video on that last show you know, I've just put out, I'll just show you what Steffi Bull's putting on it, uh, wherever it is. <laughs> Load of Baba. And Barry Earns shows were like that. Uh, I think his star attraction with Tony Dodson on it. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but. Or, or on Parry or something, I forget. It, he used to put shows on at York Hall. Now, when you're putting shows on at York Hall, you're small time, aren't you? He went from having Christopher Eubank. To Tony Dodson now but he padded Chris Eubank's record out for years didn't he so it's only like your Kel Brooks, Darren Barker, Audley Harrison them sort of people Carl Frotch that got Eddie back in mix and of course you've got Eddie, Eddie there fanny merchant aren't you so that's how I look at it does Adam Smith not realise so no uh, in answer to your question Paul now once he's made his money and they've got out of the box and they'll, they'll, they'll jog on mate, they'll jog on. That's what I think. Does Adam Smith not realise selling a narrative isn't as entertaining as selling the truth? There's no longevity in selling a lie. And when you keep getting it badly wrong, at what point do you look amateur in your, in your craft? Now, I see where you're coming from with that. Adam Smith, a.k.a. Mr. Bean, or Bean, Runner Bean, Could Have Been, Should Have Been, Never Been, Bean, Bean Bag, Baked Beans, creepy guy. Adam Smith's creepy, isn't he? Now, they've got Adam Smith selling narratives. And what he does, he gets all them around him to push the narrative. If you don't stick to that narrative, you are gone. Ask Glenn McClory. You don't believe me? Ask Clinton Woods, ask Robin Reed. If you don't stick to what they want, you're gone. Nicky Piper, gone. Jim Watt, gone. All right? Barry McGuigan, gone. All right? Barry McGuigan's probably 
one of the best pundits in world boxing at the moment. He makes Max Kellerman look like a novice. All right. So I want to see proper people doing pundit work. I want to see Jimmy Tibbs, a legendary trainer. I want to see Jimmy Tibbs on a pundit. He's just going to tell it straight, aren't they? Why ain't anybody coming out saying? Nobody's coming out saying that Dazona are on the knees with what they've paid out. I mean, they're having to put YouTubers on. And now they're putting that, uh, I forgot how to spell his name, but Logan Paul's brother who's got 20 odd million f subscribers or something. They're going to give him a fight on Sky now. What's, what's going on? Sky are now pushing the narrative, the digital age, and you've got to move with the times. They're saying all the right things to cover their asses. That's what they're saying. That is what they are saying. They're saying all the right things. And the people in the boxing industry, well, they know, don't they? At least Liam Smith come out and said something, didn't he? You've got to give Liam Smith credit, right? Liam Smith came out and said something, didn't he? So, but it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, is, it, is, this, how, is this what our boxing is going at the moment? Is this how it's going at the moment where you've got people getting on social media and getting themselves out there all the time. Every time I turn my TV on, you've got Tyson Fury or Eddie Earn or Dave Allen in front of the camera. Who's Tyson fighting? Who is he fighting now? Who's Dave Allen's best win? But they're selling themselves, aren't they? There's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes there's an overkill, isn't it? All right. There's an overkill, but is this where boxing's heading at the moment? Uh, get out there, get. He's funny on YouTube. Oh, he's funny on Twitter. What's all that about? Oh, he's he's got a following. Load of kids follow him. Logan Paul. What what? Listen, it's a load of knackers. And Eddie Earn, what he's doing? He's ending up putting these YouTubers on just to cover his ass with uh, Dazone, isn't it? That's basically what's going on, isn't it? So, Adam Smith's full of shit. Number three, does Gareth Davis consider himself a serious, non-biased journalist? Or is his column space to let? I take it, Paul, you mean Gareth Davis, the guy with the long hair, the constant rimming. Uh, Gareth Davis, uh, you fucking rimmer. Gareth Davis is the, one of the biggest rimmers in boxing. He is awful. And like I've just said there, nobody's going to pull him, are they? Nobody's going to pull him about it. They're all going to say, KSI and Logan Paul, it's exciting. It's different. It's off the cuff. We're moving with a digital age and they're just going to come out with all that shit. Utter shit. Liam Smith, you get my respect. Number five, it's my understanding a good journalist is always looking for the next big scoop. So my question is, rather than just hanging around already established names, what research and journalism is being done into the next crop of young talent? Who are the next crop and how much exposure have you given them? Well, for example, everybody knows I'm not a journalist, right? I don't even consider myself a YouTube. I am the voice of hardcore boxing. And I just correct all the knackers that, we, that I see here. For example, when you have certain people bigging themselves up as, as this and that on social media, then you look at what they're doing. <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks later you think, fucking hell, what are they doing? They're filling us full of shit. They're filling us full of shit. And I'm here to correct that bullshit. Gareth Davis doesn't give any young fighters that are coming through any exposure, right? He's got his head that far up Eddie Earns' arse that he needs it amputating. Right? And he, he's embarrassing him. And some of them hanging around them are embarrassing. Rob Tebbett. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I get embarrassed for Rob Tebbett when I see how he's behaving now. And I used to respect Rob Tebbett. I've got his number here, but... I don't respect him no more. He's crossed over to the other side, hasn't he? So he's gone over to the dark side. So it is what it is, isn't it? But like I said, all these people, they all want to get their heads into the trough. And they're not going to say a word, are they? So respect to Liam Smith.
I mean, you've got to look at it like this. Callum Smith's Ring Magazine champion, isn't he? He can't get a pay-per-view date for loving the money on Sky, can he? <laughs> hey? It's unbelievable, isn't it? But it is what it is. Now... Was it number six? Was it a mistake by Sky to sign an exclusive deal with Matchroom? Would there not have been value in signing two or more promoters and playing them off one another for quality fights and TV time? Ultimately, pipping both stables against each other in an actual worthy pay-per-views pay-per-views instead of being fed shit by one promoter taking the best talent out of the UK and being held over a barrel, leaving the fans with the scraps? Very good question, Paul. Very good question. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Eddie and Frank have 10 dates each instead of Eddie Earn having a 3 million quid a year deal with Sky on 20 dates. Eddie's got 150 grand a show there to do what he wants with, but look what he's serving up. I mean... One of them dates is probably going to be at Don Castadome in February, people are saying. Now, are you telling me Eddie Earn's going to put a great show on there? You get away with murder putting one on at Donny Dome, can't he? They'll pay him shit, right? If it sells out, what does it do? 80 grand. Donny Dome sold out does, does 80 grand. Throw in some sponsorship and the 150 in pot from Eddie, you've got 250 grand in the pot. Oh, what are you going to pay out of that 250? Oh, what are you going to pay? Dave Allen's going to want 100 grand, isn't he? And then there's 150 left. And you've got alt cards, alt card to pay. You're gonna, you've got all fighters. Young Tomlinson, he's going to want 15, 20 grand, isn't he? The amount of ticket he sells, Anthony Tomlinson, he's knocking people out, he's just got a belt. These people have got to be paid, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? If he's going to put Terry Harper on there, They've got to pay her. They can't just pay her what, what, what they have been paying her. I mean, they've got to pay people when they're world champions. They've got to be paid. <clears throat> so it is what it is, isn't it? But very good questions. But I would have liked to have seen Frank Warren with 10 dates and Eddie with 10. And let him get at it. Let him get at it. But what's going to happen, I think, is you're just going to get Eddie loading it over him because... They've got a, the conflict of interest with Sky, haven't they? They've got all other things that they do with Sky, like uh, darts and all that other stuff they do, pool and snooker and table tennis and, you know, fishing. They've got all that, haven't they? So they've got a conflict of interest. But what they're doing, they are abusing the power and Sky have been done up like kippers. And they're that desperate now... They are that desperate. They're scrambling, aren't they? They're scrambling. And what? And what? When I when I mean scrambling, right? When I mean scrambling, I mean putting this on ten pound. They're putting a pay per view on that's a tenner. What is? Are they just testing market now to put pay per views on for a tenner? Because what now? Are we going to get pay per views all the time? That shows that are half all right. Are they going to be a tenner? Is that what we're getting? We're going to have the 20 quid pay-per-views and the 10 quid pay-per-views. Is that where boxing's heading on Sky? Oh, you're talking about Sky and match them again, Porky. Well, match it, they talk about Liverpool, don't they, all the time? If you're at the top of the tree, you're there to be shot down. All right. The cake is not getting shared amongst everybody. It's not getting shared. And nobody is doing fuck all about it. What? What are they doing about it? What's going on? What I see in boxing... Is nothing short of scandalous what's going on. Scandalous. Kids are not getting the chances, are they? For example, if Josh Whale ends up fighting for an IBO wheel title, he'll not get to fight on Sky, will he? He'll fight on free sports, won't he? Or he'll fight in America for a wheel title. But the point I'm trying to make is this. It's all right for them all looking out for the friends, isn't it? But what about the people that are getting left left behind? The talented people. Like I've just mentioned there, Callum Smith. He's just gone and won the WBSS. And <laughs> he's not getting a look in, is he? But yet they're talking Josh Taylor for Ritson at Newcastle, St James Park. Ritson's barely British level, isn't he? Barely British level. Well, Lewis Ritson's a British champion, isn't he? Has he won a European belt? 
No, has he even got a Commonwealth? I think he might have. I'm not sure. He's got. He's won. He's not won a European title. Dylan White. He's not won a European title, has he? But yeah, he gained pay per views anyway because he does numbers. Because he's funny on IFL. I don't know what it is. It seems to me that if you want to get to Eddie Hearn, you've got to get to Coogan, haven't you? And get on IFL and get your sends out there. I don't know. I don't see Scott Fitzgerald getting any love. He's just bashed Fowler up in Cheeseman. He do not get no love. He do not get no PR from them, does he? Why not? Kid like him, Scott Fitzgerald, decorated amateur. He do not get no love at all. So, it is where it is, isn't it? But like I said, it's the Dave Allen syndrome, isn't it? You've got, yourself, you've got to get yourself out there on social media and get yourself in the public domain if you want to get dates off Sky. It doesn't matter if you're any good, does it? I mean, Dave Allen, is he half all right? I don't know. Hashtag doing bits, Dave. Doing bits. Doing bits, Dave, isn't it? That's the one. But now we're, I don't know, I think that, uh, I think that boxing at the moment, we're being fed a load of shit. Now, people keep saying boxing's on everybody's lips. How is it on everybody's lips? Because we're being force fed it every week. Anthony Joshua, where's he fighting next? Let's look at the big stars in the UK. Anthony Joshua, he just fought in New York. He's now going to Saudi, why? Why is that? 41 million and a 59. Anthony Joshua's had 100 million quid from them two fights against Ruiz. 100 million to, to, add to, the, to add to the 70 million he already had. Does he give a fuck about you lot? Does he heck? So we've got Joshua, who ain't got a belt and he's fighting in Saudi. And if he gets beat against Ruiz, how can he be pay per view? You can't keep having defeats and saying you're pay per view. So Joshua. He's, he's, he's at the top of the tree, but he's on slide. One after Joshua, who was that? Well, who? Dylan White? Not won a European belt. His best belt is one was a British. So there's Dylan White. And he's been beat by Joshua. Who's after Dylan White? Josh Taylor. Yeah? Josh Taylor. But he's only had 16 fights, and he's not an Eddie Hearn fighter, is he? Eddie might be promoting him because McGuigan's haven't got a TV deal, have they? But as far as I'm concerned, uh, there's peop there's there's no big stars at the moment. Where are the big stars? Groves and DeGale are gone. Billy Joe Saunders, he doesn't sell a ticket. He's fighting in America. So who's fighting in England who's a big star? Who? Who's selling out arenas in England? Dylan White can't fight again, can he? Because he's got... Is drug conviction of him, or or is he convict? Is it a conviction or what? I don't know. Is Dylan White fighting in December? I don't know. Amir Khan and Kelbrook, they're both washed up, aren't they? Amir Khan and Kelbrook are washed up. That's that's the that's the moral of the story. They're gagging now for that pay per view. Gagging, a pair of them are gagging. So their history. James DeGale and Groves are gone. Bellew's gone, but he never beat a champion anyway. So where are these big stars in UK? Daniel Debar, he's on the rise, but he's only 22. Who is the? Who 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 is the big stars? Who? Who is the big stars? There ain't none, is there? I don't think so. So. So, wait. Let me go back to these other questions from this gentleman here. Uh. This is from Matt. All the best, Matt. <laughs> Evening, Porky. Matt, Matt Dobson, is it? Hope you and yours are well. Thanks for the continued content. I try to catch as much as possible, though I swerve the her and heavy stuff, as we all know what he's like. Seeing the tweet about 10 questions for Dan Raphael, Gareth Davis, and, and Mr. Bean. If they had honest answers, I'd. If they had honest answers, I'd. I'd love to hear four questions. Who, who are on the, who they think are on. Oh, this is what you would ask Dan Raphael, Mr. Bean, and Gareth Davis. Who do they think are on the juice? PEDs. Be a great question if that could uh, be answered. 
Well, I don't know, you can always have your ideas about people who's on juice, can't you? And I look at it like this. People who are performing out of the skin. I mean, well, Canelo. Going up all them weight divisions like that and carrying his power up. I don't know. But if Canelo had failed a drug test, would we know about it? Biggest star in boxing. If Anthony Joshua failed a drug test, right, would they tell us about it? Did they want to tell us about the Dillian White failure? Did they? No, they didn't, did they? They kept it under wraps, didn't they? But Thomas Hauser told us all, didn't he? Number two, most overrated active fighter. The most overrated active fighter. Uh, who do I think? Well, that's what you would ask them. Uh, Anthony Fowler. I think he's overrated. Yeah, I think, I think Luke Campbell's overrated because he won a gold medal. He won a gold medal at Olympics, but it was a weak division, wasn't it, at the time? I think he's overrated. He's already been licked a few times, hasn't he? Uh, I think Joshua are overrated as well. He had a gift at Olympics. Shouldn't he have even been at... He got beat in first round in Olympics, didn't he? He only beat the Chinaman, and he was no good. What, he was useless. Joshua had three gifts at Olympics. So I think Joshua, Luke Campbell, I think they're overrated. Uh, most understated active fighter, Scott Fitzgerald. Gerald, is it? The kid who beat Fowler. I don't think he gets enough credit and enough PR. I don't think Callum Smith gets much PR. Uh, I think Billy Joe Saunders gets a lot of PR, but... Who has he beat? Tyson Fury is another one. Tyson Fury is... Is he overrated? I don't know. I think jury's out on Tyson Fury and Billy Joe. Whether they've got their heads together to say who they're going to fight, I don't know. Who's Billy Joe Saunders' best five wins? Andy Lee, Lemieux, Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, John Ryder. And who's the other one? Who, who's the fifth guy? I can't even tell you, I tell you that fifth guy, so Monroe probably. I mean, Billy Joe Sorton and Nick Blackwell, they're guys that uh would you call them elite wins? You wouldn't, would you? Who's Tyson Fury's best win? Oh, Vladimir Klitschko, pushing 40 year old. Who else? Who's Tyson Fury's second best win? You'd have to say Cunningham, third best Chisora, fourth best Chisora rematch. Fifth best, Christian Hammer. That's it. They're not killers, are they? They're not killers. You know, so... Overrated and understated. There's just a few there. But I don't think that Scott Fitzgerald gets gets the, uh, gets a mention. Gets enough mention. So... What would they do to improve the sport? Well, what I'd do to improve the sport is... I would... I'd get everybody tested. I'd have everybody tested non-stop. I want to see them all getting tested regular. I'd like to see uh, out-of-season testing. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see uh, everybody fight each other. I don't want to see any of this ducking and hiding behind TV. Because then hiding, hiding behind TV companies. Hiding behind your manager. Hiding behind promotional companies. I want to see the best fight the best. Now, we never saw Witter Hatton. We never saw Carl Froch, Carl Zaghi. Uh, but yet we saw DeGale Groves. Why? Frank Warren got, got him at it, didn't he? We saw DeGale Groves. We saw Scott Fitzgerald, Anthony Fowler. So why not? Why can't we get Joshua Tyson Fury over at line? When Tyson Fury and Joshua do fight, if they fight at all, Joshua's had his defeat and Tyson's had a blemish on his record. He's had a draw on it. So... It takes a bit of coolness off it, doesn't it? Will Tyson fight Wilder next? Well, got to do now, one is after he's shot his mouth off. If he doesn't, well, what will happen? People are fickle, aren't they? Tyson knows how fickle people are. Is he bothered while he's piling millions up? No. Can he fight? Yes. So, I don't know what's going on, but I want to see proper fights. I want to see proper fights. That's what I, I, I want to see. I want to see people fight each other and be made to fight each other. I want to see tournaments in every weight division with the top guys. 
I don't want to see everybody hiding behind sanctioning bodies. But the drug testing for me is a massive, massive problem. There's got to be more transparency around drug testing because this B sample is nothing but a joke. Isn't it, Rocky? Come here. Come on. Come on. Come here, Rock. Come and say hello. You've not been on camera for a bit, have you, mate? Eh? You've not been on camera for a bit, have you? Eh? Are you okay? Eh? Eh? Are you alright? You don't like these fireworks, do you? Eh? So that's how I look at it. So, you know, if you want loyalty, do you know what you do? You go and get a dog, don't you? Because you know dogs, they, they love you for who you are, don't they? So, but you've had 10 questions there. It took up half an hour of my time. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. What's the matter? Jumping down? I so hope you don't like me after shave. Make us. Make us. Make us. Oh boy. So, peace out.